Hello, this is Mr. White, and this video is an introduction to sequences. Uh, specifically today, we're going to get into what are called arithmetic sequences, and yes, I did pronounce it that way on purpose. Uh, sequences are going to be sort of the foundation of something we do in calculus, uh, finding the areas underneath curves, and I've probably thrown up a similar visual in class and alluded to the fact that we would soon need to be able to generate lists of numbers, uh, in this case, areas of little rectangles and that we would ultimately want to be able to add those areas efficiently. So that's what sequences are ultimately going to allow us to do. Uh, this may seem to be an abrupt change of course at this time in, in pre-calculus, but I want to emphasize that the more you can connect what we're doing now to things we've done in the past, the, the more comfortable you'll feel and all the old tricks of, of other topics that you've learned previously will still apply. So let me start with a, a road map here of where we're going to be going. A lot of the terminology might overwhelm you a little bit, so I suggest that you copy this uh, diagram down into your notes. And this, when, when you get a little bit overwhelmed with all the new vocabulary, might help you stay grounded. Just to, uh, we're certainly not going to get into all of this in today's video. Uh, today we're specifically going to cover uh, sequences. We'll get into explicit versus recursive, and we're going to focus on arithmetic sequences. Notice when, um, when you study multiplication, division, subtraction, addition, and such, that's arithmetic. But when we use this as an adjective to describe a type of sequence, we say arithmetic. Uh, and as far as what we can connect it to from our past, the arithmetic sequences are going to relate to linear functions. And ultimately, on another day, geometric sequences are going to relate to exponential functions. All right, so let me start building that connection to previous material. Nothing new to you on the board right now. You know, uh, you, sh you know all about linear equations and the mx plus b form, y equals mx plus b. You know about function notation. And remember that one of the, the main um, benefits of function notation is that you get to record the input as well as record the output. So it's very clear that in order to get this output of 3, that I plugged in a 1 as my input and I plugged in a 2 to get a 5, and so on. And we know these can be thought of graphically as coordinate pairs, and that when I graph those coordinate pairs, you know to expect that you're going to get a line with a slope of um, 2 and a y-intercept of 1. Again, nothing new there. And again, we uh, draw a line. Whoa, I messed that up, didn't I? That's what I meant to do, y-intercept of 1. And then we draw a line through there, and that line goes on infinitely. All right, so let's uh, introduce arithmetic sequences this way. Very similar idea. The sequence notation is a little bit different. So instead of saying, actually, let me put it down here. Instead of saying f of x equals 2x plus 1, I say a subscript n equals 2n plus 1. And just like with uh, function notation, instead of f of x, we could say g of x. Uh, there's nothing special about the letter A. You could say B sub N, C sub N, uh, and so on. All right. Um, so similarly, instead of saying F of 1 equals 3, I'll say A subscript 1 equals 3, or, or A sub 2 equals 5, A sub 3 equals 7. And similarly, although uh, we don't do this quite as often, uh, you may consider graphing these on a coordinate plane. And you would, again, get these same points. The main difference, though, is that we will not connect the dots. Uh, whereas with function notation and functions, generally, x can be any real number that, uh, um, yeah, any real number, I'll say. Uh, the n in sequences are only going to be whole numbers. And unless otherwise stated, you typically start with 1, 2, you start with 1 and then go upward. 2, 3, 4, etc. Uh, sometimes we may start with 0. Sometimes we may start with some other positive number, but we will never say anything like a subscript 4.5. That's never going to happen. We will stick with the, the whole numbers here. All right, so again, sequences are uh, um, just get used to the new notation, and if you have something that looks kind of like your mx plus b linear equation, we call it arithmetic. All right, so here's our first example. And rather than just do it in front of you, I'm going to trust that I can 
just display the answers up here and that you can look at it and study the, 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 what we're going to call the explicit rule. This is the explicit rule for B sub n. This is the explicit rule for C sub n. And I trust that you can make that analogy. You can think of uh, B sub n as being similar to f of x equals 3x minus 5. And C sub n, you can think of that as g of x equals x squared plus 1. And see how these numbers were generated. These outputs were generated. Um, with an explicit rule, which again is akin to our function notation, the benefit of it is that you can jump to any number. Uh, we, don't, we, we can jump all the way to B subscript 100. We could just plug in 100 and get 295 for B sub 100. We could plug in 100 and get 10,001 for C sub 100. All right. Um, and again, just to emphasize our terminology here, uh, the first one, B sub n, is arithmetic. The second one, which looks more like uh, C sub n, which looks more like a quadratic function, we, we're not going to come up with a special term for that. We're just going to say it's not arithmetic. All right, so again, that was the explicit rule for defining functions. For the second example, let's look at what it, look, what it looks like to uh, write a recursive rule. And recursive means that when you're doing it, first you curse, and then you recurse. You curse again. No, I'm just joking. That's not really true. But, but there really is a repetitive aspect to it. Uh, recursive means that you're applying the, uh, a rule over and over again. So let's see what that looks like. Notice that uh, b sub 2 is simply the, pre the, the previous um, term, b sub 1, plus 3, right? Uh, b sub 2 was um, b sub 1, or negative 2, plus 3. That's what gives us the 1. Similarly, b sub 3 equals b sub 2, plus 3. b sub 4 equals b sub 3, plus 3. It's just the previous term, plus 3. Now, if we're doing functions and linear equations, we would think of that jump of 3. We would call that a slope. We're going to call it a common difference here. So again, that, um, for an arithmetic sequence, that uh, number that you're jumping by each time to get to the next term is called the common difference. And in this case, um, we'll say it's the letter D equals 3. D is usually used for the common difference. All right. so. Notice that in every case, for any B subscript n, it's just the previous term. And in the subscript, we'll write n minus 1 plus 3. All right, I hope that's clear enough. Now, that is part of our recursive rule. I'm going to clear off some space here by eliminating these. That is uh, part of our recursive rule, but we're not done. And one mistake that students commonly make is they just write that and nothing else. Notice that if I were to just write that and give that to somebody and say, here, generate the list of numbers, that's really not enough information. It tells us that every term is the preceding term plus 3, but we need to tell what the starting point is. We need to say what the first term is that, uh, that gets us going. So part of your recursive rule and please don't forget this, because you will get penalized if you don't write this part, is you have to say what the first term is. OK, that's what allows us to say that the second term would be this first term plus 3. And then from there, the third term would be the second term plus 3, and so on. And as a little technicality, this may seem like not as big a deal, but we really should get in the habit of saying n greater than 1. Um, what that tells us is that this subscript n here should not be a negative number, and in fact, it should not even be 1 itself. If you were to try to plug 1 in here, that would make this subscript uh, 0. And there's no such thing as b sub 0 in this example. Um, so the smallest number that n could be is 2. So either say n greater than 1, or you'll sometimes see in the book n greater than or equal to 2. Um, and either of those is fine. Either case, and again, let me just emphasize, you certainly don't need to write both of those. You can either or. That is our recursive rule for the same sequence. Again, I emphasize, highlight here, that common difference is what you might think of as, as being the slope for a linear equation. All right, example number three, defining an arithmetic sequence. This time, we're just given the sequence. We're provided the sequence in the form of a list of numbers. 
And we're asked to provide the common difference, a recursive rule, an explicit rule, and the 100th term. So first of all, notice that what makes this arithmetic is the fact that there's this constant jump, or this constant difference, as it's called, uh, or common difference, I should say. Uh, and every time we are jumping by 7 to get to the next term, that's what makes it arithmetic. If this were a different number, if it jumped by plus 7 and then plus 9 and plus 11, we may detect a pattern, but it wouldn't be called arithmetic then. So this common difference in this case is 7, so we just put d equals 7, and part a is answered. For the recursive rule, we just did that, and I hope that made sense, so I'm going to do this fairly quickly. Remember, we have to define the starting point. Um, and notice I'm just using the letter A. There's nothing special about A. I, I, I could have said B sub 1 if I wanted to. Just like when you're defining a function, you can say either F of X or G of X if you're not told specifically which one to use. Anyway, A sub 1 equals negative 15. That's the starting point. And for every term after that, A sub N equals the previous term, which is A sub N minus 1 plus that common difference of 7. And that only applies when n is greater than 1. Remember to put that n greater than 1. That is our recursive rule. It's a rule that we would apply over and over again. We would apply it for a sub 2, and then we would apply it again to get a sub 3, and so on. We would recursively apply that. All right, for the explicit rule, uh, let me point out that you could use your old tricks. And again, I, I've encouraged you to, to relate this back to your previous material. So if you wanted to think of that list as being coordinate points of 1, comma, negative 15, uh, 2, comma, negative 8, those are x and y values, right? Or you could think of them as x and y values. You could then use whatever old tricks you have up your sleeve to come up with the, the y equals mx plus b equation. However, I'm going to go about it slightly differently. Um, so let me bring this list down here and scroll down a bit. Uh, I'm going about this slightly differently. I'm going to say that for this list, a sub 1 equals negative 15, and a sub 2 equals that negative 15 plus the common difference of 7. And for emphasis, I'm going to say yes, I just want 1 7. a sub 3 equals negative 15 plus 7, I could think of that as being a sub 2 right now, plus another 7. That's how I'd get a sub 3, right? However, let's take that 7 plus 7 and just say that that's two 7s. To get a sub 4, I would take that previous result and add another 7, which would give me 7 times 3, right? All right, so in general, we're noticing the pattern that for any a subscript n, I would get negative 15 plus 7 times what? Well, notice the pattern, that when we had a subscript 2, we had a 1 over here, 1 less than 2. When we had a 3, we had 1 less than 3. When we had a 4, we had 1 less than uh, 4. So when we have an n here, we should put 1 less than n. Now, sometimes I'm, um, it may be perfectly allowable to just stop there and say that's my explicit rule. Um, I'm going to say I'm going to take it just a little bit further. I'm going to say um, if we do a little bit of simplification, that's negative 15 plus 7n minus 7, and that's the same as 7n minus 22. So I'm going to say my explicit rule, running out of room here, but I'm going to say my explicit rule is a subscript n equals 7n minus 22. All right, you may notice in there that if you're wondering how in general could I come up with an explicit rule for an arithmetic sequence, you're going to notice in the book that there's a formula that looks something like a sub n equals a sub 1 plus d times n minus 1, or maybe it says n minus 1 times d, something like that. But I don't want you to just memorize that formula. I want you to, to kind of go through the process that I did and see how this just makes sense. You're not just memorizing a formula. All right, for the hundredth term, with my explicit formula, I want to point out that if we had just left our, our um, formula, at, if we had tried to use the recursive formula, finding the hundredth term would 
be a long process because I'd first have to find the 99th term and before that I'd have to find the 98th term. So recursive is not as convenient. But with this explicit rule, I can simply say a sub 100, that's 7 times 100 minus 22, which equals 700 minus 22, or 678, I believe. So there you have it. That is our arithmetic sequence. Um, here's the definition in the book. Uh, I encourage you to look that up and study it a bit if you, if you feel the need. But again, I really want to stress, I don't want you just memorizing this formula here. We want this to make sense and relate to stuff you've done before. I further want to point out that if you remember the point-slope form of the linear equation, which you may grimace when I say that and think I didn't like that form as much, but this form is going to be our best friend in, um, in AP calculus. We tend to hardly ever use the mx plus b, the, the slope-intercept form in AP calc. And I want to point out how this um, point-slope form relates term for term to the formula we just discussed here. So again, many connections to be made. Um, but for now, try this one on your own. For this arithmetic sequence, find the common difference, the recursive rule, explicit rule, and hundredth term. Pause the video at this point, please. All right, let's see how you did. Common difference, recursive rule, explicit rule, and hundredth term. Definitely come on by if you had any trouble on this. Um, the notation is something you want to get down before we proceed with no, more material.